We're starting our celebration service at 11. And I think that's right about now. So if you would like to come in. And we will begin. There's people. today with a in a musical invocation Uh, do you know African Marketplace? Yeah. It's an F. That's all they said. Except they make me look sadder because they're horizontal. Well, you know, the whole thing. Yeah, I know. That old bit. Slimming. Yeah. Different tune. Slimming. We were talking about a different tune. An early big thank you to Henry the Tech. Without whom, none of this would be possible. Thirteen. Uh, Thirteen. Uh, he's got a sixteen. Are you able to 
Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming early. We're having a, a combined um, Brass Solidarity Band and the Walker Regulars. So we're going to start out with a couple tunes, and then Mary will come up for announcements. I'm going to lay down my sword and shield Down by the riverside Down by the riverside Down by the riverside I'm going to lay down my sword and shield Down by the riverside I'm going to study war no more I ain't going to study war no more Ain't gonna study war no more. Ain't gonna study war no more. I ain't gonna study war no more. Ain't gonna study war no more. Ain't gonna study war no With the Prince of Peace Down by the riverside Down by the riverside Down by the riverside Gonna walk with the Prince of Peace Down by the riverside Gonna study war no more Ain't gonna study war no more Ain't gonna study war no more Study war no more. I ain't gonna study war no more. Ain't gonna study war no more. Ain't gonna study war no more. Hit it, brass.
Yeah, thank you, everyone. Uh, introduce the members of the band. We have over here Cheryl Kramer on piano, David West on the banjo, Jim McCreary on French horn, Dave, uh, I forget your last name, Dave. Wojcik. Wojcik on guitar, and Tom Carlson uh, from the Brass Solidarity Group and an old friend uh, from Brass Messengers as well uh, on trumpet, and Colin Geralt's on trumpet uh, from the Brass Solidarity, and Joe Hessel playing clarinet, and uh, Harlan on, on mandolin, and Alan singing. So um, welcome, everyone. I want to just say a few things about Brass Solidarity, which um, uh, turned out was kind of a bad weekend for people to be able to show up here. But um, I'm glad to have the members that we do have. And, and they kind of got together down at George Floyd Square I've been playing with them on Mondays at 4.30 and have been serving the community in ways showing up for vigils and for memorials for the community and just kind of holding, holding the presence and bringing healing music down at George Floyd Square. So I uh, really appreciate uh, being a part of that and uh, having them join us here today. So we're going to do one more song here and then launch into our, uh, our regular service. Uh, I'll fly away. Page 88. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away when the fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. Fly away. Mix up. I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away in the morning. When, when I, I die, hallelujah, by and by. I'll fly away.
<laughs> Welcome to Walker Church, where our mission is to nurture spirituality, build caring community, and work to graciously for peace with justice and mercy. All right. Uh, we'll do our announcements first today. So does anyone have an announcement? Nancy. Next Saturday is the women's brunch at Christine Smith's place. Um, you can call me if you don't know the address. It's at 1030. Bring a dish to share. Limit 12. Other announcements? Announcements. Check in. Yes. Well, Minnesota Alliance of Peacemakers. Tomorrow, we've got this, this talk going on that you're welcome to join at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. And there'll be flyers in the back. It's basically, the talk is about climate change and the threat to democracy. Be there or be square. <laughs> tomorrow, 7. Hey, thank you. Where is it? Steve? Uh, where, do you know where, where is it? Where it is, the location? Oh, the location, it's, um, <clears throat> it's on Zoom, and um, you'll probably have found that Zoom link in many places. It could be at the Walker Church announcement that comes out every week. You'll, you'll find that Zoom link there or in the flyer in the back. I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay. I just uh, wanted uh, to make oh, yeah, one announcement about, um, I got some materials up here for the Urban Farm Project, and um, we had a great rally yesterday, went over to Public Works and uh, um, with uh, um, climate action, uh, climate justice uh, folks, so uh, really pumped up for that. We have, uh, um, you know, keep us in our th your thoughts because we have mediation on Tuesday. Not sure how that's going to go. It seems like the um, community and the city are pretty far apart, but um, uh, we should find out um, if, if they are interested in supporting us um, on Tuesday. We have a, a lawsuit going and it'll revert to that if we can't um, come to any agreement. So, um, very interested in that. And a lot of people have supported um, this um, program. We've had 540 individual contributions on our GoFundMe in the last couple of of years, which is astounding. And we've raised um, like 300,000 from the state of Minnesota and probably another 100,000 from um, individual donations. So if the city wants to stop us, um, good luck to them. You know, we're, uh, we're going for it. So um, right. that's my announcement. Great, thank you. Other announcements? Exciting. Okay, um, next Sunday is May 1st and uh, we will have a combined celebration of May Day and um, Earth Day. Uh, and uh, Phil Mance will be speaking. Um, and then the next Sunday is May 8th, that's Mother's Day. So I'm looking for people who would like to contribute poetry or music uh, for mothers, for the broad concept of mothers, okay? All right, no other announcements. We're going on this morning with a guided meditation, I believe, from Steve Cobian. Welcome, welcome and ground. That's the next stage. Welcome, everybody. It, I see beauty in front of me. I see beauty behind me. I see beauty within. So let's welcome the directions. You welcome, you welcome the energy of the East, the direction of the lover. You welcome the energy of new beginnings, of connections, and with beauty and the richness of the world. Aho. Welcome the energy of the South, the direction of the warrior. Welcome the energy of service, of action in the world in service to the realm. <clears throat> Aho. And join me. With, we welcome in the energy 
of the West, the direction of the magician. Welcome the energy of introspection, going within to find the gifts of healing. Oh. The North, welcome the energy of the direction of the king. The North Star, Polaris, the energy of wisdom and blessings. Aho. Uh -huh. The up, we welcome the energy of the sky above, the magician principle, the energy of spirit and inspiration. Aho. Uh -huh. Welcome the energy of the earth below, the feminine principle, the energy of the spirit of generosity. Aho. Uh -huh. And within, we welcome these energies of within, the principle of wholeness, the energy of spirit, and of the mysterious. Aho. Uh -huh. The ancestors, we welcome these spirits of the Godfathers, our ancestors, and those that have gone before us, and on those whose shoulders we stand. We welcome the spirit of the children yet to come who will stand upon our shoulders, invite into this circle the spirits of energy and those who guide, protect, and bless us to be fully who we are. Welcome, welcome everybody. Let's take a few minutes to come into our space, the space where our body is occupying, invites you to close your eyes and settle into this place. Find your feet on the ground and imagine the connection to the earth. As we observe the breath, Naturally, as we observe it, we elongate slightly on the exhale, just watching this breath as we settle into this breath, noticing any jerkiness, the quality of that breath. Relax from the crown of the head to the tips of the toes as you, as you relax your neck, your shoulders, and your spine. Just scan your body and relax. Relax your forehead. Relax your shoulders. Down your arms to the tips of your fingers. Again, from your shoulders and your back your hips, your legs, down to your toes. Again, relax your thoughts, your forehead, and listen. Listen and watch your breath. I invite you to go into this place, that place that you know so well, that loving, peaceful place. What does that look like? Where is that loving place for you? Is it by a waterfall? I invite you to go there. Take the next few minutes. Relax into that loving, that belonging place. What does it feel like? What does it smell like? What does bliss feel like?
and thoughts come up, just witness and let them go. Come back into that place, that place that you know so well. That loving place where you belong, this inner, inner peace. This place we're all connected. We're breathing as one. breath. With your eyes closed, come back to your body. Maybe wiggle your fingertips, your toes, <clears throat> and, and bow into your hands, your hands in prayer position and your chest as you bow and open your palms and cup your eyes and massage your forehead and your temple and slowly open your eyes as you put your hands into prayer position and slowly look up. Mm. If there are any benefits that have been gained during this time, may we offer it to those in suffering to eliminate their suffering. And for ourselves, thy will be done. Namaste. Mm, thank you, Steve. Uh, we have a, well, I want to thank Tony for taking the offering during the announcements, which we always do, but we have an offertory now. Yes, and then we'll have Jesse, um, um, Jesse's going to do a poem, but oh. after, should we do that before? Let's do the poem first, okay. yeah. First. Yeah. Do you want? The 
this will work. Yeah, you want to stand? Yes. Yes. All right. Thank you. Um, got a piece of paper here. Let me put that. If that doesn't fall off, it'll work. All right. <clears throat> what I have is a. <clears throat> Um, pros uh, from the internet uh, and uh, from a source there where I discovered it while searching Martin Luther. Martin Luther was um, a monk and a pastor in 1483 to 1546. That's a while back. <clears throat> Perhaps we need a 21st century Martin Luther to challenge the church of technology and other pursuits of passion that feel like religion. A new power is loose in the world. It is nowhere and it is everywhere. <clears throat> it knows everything about us, our movements, our thoughts, our desires, our fears, our secrets, who our friends are, our financial status, even how well we sleep at night. <clears throat> we tell it things that we would not even whisper to another human being. Technology shapes our politics, stokes our appetites, loosens our tongues, heightens our moral pos positions, keeps us entertained and therefore passive. We engage with it many times daily and with every moment of contact, we add to the unfathomable weight of its priesthood. We are mesmerized by it. We are members of the church of technology. <clears throat> we can resist by reducing, uh, by refusing to tell and disclose our personal information technology. We can restructure to become sustainable. We can be real, open, honest, filled with integrity, present at the meeting, loving of our brothers and sisters. We can welcome change and we can pray without ceasing. So now we can have the brass messengers, uh, excuse me, the brass solidarity come back up for one more tune uh, for the, um, what would be the offertory. So come on up, let's try African Marketplace.
Yeah, thank you, my music friends. And thank you all for coming today, and thank you, Mary, for helping me uh, figure out. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into this. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Um, being, being up here in front, so appreciate. And I don't know what I'm going to end up saying, but um, it's in the tradition of uh, us taking turns, letting the congregation know who we are and how we got here and uh, what our hopes are for this organization and uh, life in general. And so it's my turn. Uh, after 45 years or something, I suppose it's about time uh, people get to you know, see me stand up here and, uh, and uh, see whether I'm saying anything that's true or false. Uh, I, I won't expect you to figure that out. But or I won't expect to uh, uh, own up to it if, if you do. But um, yeah, so yeah, my name's Steve Sandberg, and I grew up in the um, uh, suburb of Edina, and um, my parents were um, uh, Swedish Americans, uh, second generation, um, the, um, the bo on both sides, and, and uh, came over in about the 1860s to Homestead in Wisconsin. And um, then they were both, both my parents were involved in World War II and afterwards um, uh, ended up in uh, building a house in, uh, out near Southdale in Edina. And that's where I grew up and went to high school and whatnot. Um, you know, I, uh, and, and so, um, you know, I'm just noticing so many, um, similarities, uh, parallels between the 60s and now in terms of, you know, I, I was um, in a Lutheran church and I, and I was um, uh, co-chair of our Luther League and, uh, you know, in the 60s there, were, there was a lot of civil rights um, going on um, and, and uh, unfortunately Martin Luther King was assassinated um, and when I th believe I was a sophomore or a junior. So a lot of unrest, uh, civil unrest, due to uh, racial discrimination, um, very similar to now. I remember our, we had a wonderful youth pastor who, who I really uh, thought a lot of, and, um, and he confided in me that the church wanted him to leave because he was making the kids feel guilty about uh, civil rights and about being racist or having racist policies and examining that, you know, and... Uh, um, that's what happened. He, he ended up being excused and, and at that time. So I really think of that, you know, now I've seen that in the news now that um, there's, there's, uh, they're, they're trying to keep schools from um, talking about racial equity in the schools for that very same reason. You know, they think they're protecting um, the youth, you know, which is, you know, totally backwards, of course. Um, so, um, you know, another thing. So uh, I ended up um, coming to the U in 1970, and that was, um, oh, I can't remember, if it, I think it was the bombing of Cambodia, or if it was the uh, incursion. incursion, did you say? Yeah, into Cambodia, and, uh, the um, yeah, invasion into Cambodia, and there was a student strike at the university, uh, which I really got involved in, and, and a lot of my, my, um, feelings about democracy and, and meetings and whatnot, I think were formulated back there. We would be in, in at Kaufman Union until all hours in the morning with these mass meetings and, you know, figuring out what the agenda was for the next day. And, you know, you know everyone got a chance to speak. Uh, you know, for me, it was like a really uh, wonderful example of democracy in action. You know, and we, we might end up taking until 3, 4 a.m. for everyone to have a chance to speak and, and propose what we should do the next day but we would finally agree and so it, it created this this unity uh, which you know i really you know came to kind of expect from um you know meetings and democracy and stuff that everyone gets a chance to say what what they believe and you know um, you may be uh, way apart from what someone else wants and they get a chance and in the end you choose and vote and you know, you've got something and you go away together so you get to the same place at once, you know, and, and I see so much here in our city where they're trying to design something behind the scenes that they think will politically meet what they hear people saying. And 
It just doesn't work that way. You know, if we don't, then we end up, you know, wondering who made the decision and wondering why we didn't get a voice. And they'll talk about engagement, and, but, you know, they just have you put a sticker on the thing that um, they <laughs> put up there. Um, you know, they, they make the choices. You're supposed to choose a sticker, and then you never hear whether your sticker won or not anyway. But um, so, um, but, yeah, so I... Um, uh, was involved and in after the student strike in 70 we went out to uh, we I was working out of the um, the uh, international students office at Kaufman and we organized a peace caravan to the United Nations and we rented like four Ford Galaxies and uh, six to a car and stuffed those big huge trunks with um, our luggage and headed out to New York and kind of um, uh, you know, apparently we were news because no other student group had gone to the United Nations. And it was really very interesting for me, you know, being 20 years old to, to um, be making appointments at delegations from all these different countries. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of smart people from a lot of different parts of the world. And so um, I really uh, valued that learning experience uh, as well as just feeling kind of like I do today. What am I doing here <laughs> up, up in front of people trying to uh, say something? But... Um, you know, I, I guess my, um, my um, you know, the other thing I wanted to get to then is, uh, you know, what, what um, is, is the question of what is church? And, um, you know, because that was really where I formulated my um, values and belief systems and, and spiritual, um, you know, what, what I felt was my um, thing to do in the world, right or wrong, and... Uh, so, you know, uh, when I, you know, our church um, had supported the war and, but didn't want any of the church um, members to have to go to the war, but they supported the war. There was the draft back then and you were able to get out of the draft if you went the student, uh, with, with a student deferment, et cetera. So, um, you know, and then I, that was where I realized that, no, I don't, you know, my, my spiritual upbringing says, no, we shouldn't be supporting this war. And so I think we all have made decisions like that um, and continue, and that's um, how, how we um, uh, act in, in the world. And so now we're in this situation where um, our church, uh, which, you know, I wanted to, again, draw parallels in the 60s when Brian came. I didn't start here until in the middle 70s, but at that time, um, a lot of the congregation um, moved to the suburbs and the folks that didn't were um, aging, you know, probably probably not even as old as us, but they just decided they didn't want to be part. And, you know, and other people were here, like, um, can maybe correct me on this, uh, were here before I was. But uh, from what I understand, it was a, a, a dying congregation, and Brian was sent to do a, um, a ministry here. And, um, wow, he threw himself into it, and there were so many uh, wonderful groups, you know, and I... I get kind of a little bit teary-eyed thinking that of the church building that was here that you know this is a wonderful building now and but um, you know there was a basement and there were it was divided up into lots of offices and there were draft counseling and there was pottery and there was rainbow build doing uh, his uh, alternative periodicals and there was education exploration center and there was uh, the, um, Powderhorn Puppet Theater started down there, and um, who else am I thinking about? A day. Well, yeah, eventually Fresh Air Radio, um, Brian was very instrumental in getting that going. Uh, oh, Almond Tree Choir was um, met at Walker, so those are, and I'm, I, know, I know there was more, and it continued to evolve over the years, but um, that I thought was genius uh, of Brian to, you know, include all of these um, um, you know, groups that had passion for making the world a better place, and that was really our ministry. Um, and uh, it's kind of interesting how, how when the district superintendent would come for the meeting to see if we were meet, meeting the goals of being a new church, and you know, he, he wanted us to, uh, of course, um, collect a lot of money and give apportionments to um, as as a uh, growing congregation. That was their goal, and so Brian would get all of us, even though we, you know. You know, I'm, I'm not including myself, but a lot of people say, "Well, I'm not a I'm not a member of this church. I don't join churches. I don't, you know, 
believe in this or believe in that, but he says, well, that's fine, that's fine, just come to this meeting, you know, and so the, you know, Walker, the, the um, Almond Tree Choir was, was the church choir, and, um, and the, um, you know, the various uh, activities that we had um, throughout the week were the number of people that um, had attended services, basically. Um, um, it was what we presented to the district superintendent, and he kind of looked skeptical, and went, well, okay, and <laughs> off he goes for um, until he has to come back next year and evaluate us. So, um, you know, uh, so it's going to be really interesting to see uh, now that we have this faithful path, um, um, you know, how, how it will bring out from us, you know, what we, and I remember Walter asked us, what, uh, at one of our retreats, what is church for you? What is church? And I remember thinking, that's a little hard. You know, that's a big question. What is church? But, you know, of course, we've, when we see it here today, uh, you folks that are here today, we saw it a lot in the past week for our memorial services and our Easter service. Um, people, you know, show up to, um, to, you know, be together and um, be on, share their spiritual path and, um, you know, and that's one thing to me that's really been important to Walker is that, you know, we're open and affirming of other spiritual paths, any spiritual path. It's not uh, just one way, my way uh, kind of a church. And uh, I think, you know, I think that is uh, something for me that I'll uh, put into the question of what is church, because I really believe that that's important. And I think it's, um, you know, there's... Uh, uh, you know, if we think about growth, that we have to embody that and ha invite people to uh, join on that path with us that, um, that we, you know, um, want to share your path. And, and um, you know, I know other people want to share my path. So that's, to me, the bond that, that keeps us together. And so um, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, what else is I going to say? Um, yeah, what is my message? <laughs> it's very timely. Um, yeah, so um, part of the documents that we received back in December f uh, when, the, uh, when um, the district super was here, um, a, healthy con a healthy church, one that has a clear mission and vision that drives ministry decisions and shared excitement and ownership by the congregation one in which there is a positive impact in the community, hopefulness about the future, and genuine joy and love among the people. So, you know, for me, you know, I guess, um, you know, I just kind of believe in a great mystery. I find that when I start saying what God is, that it tends to just diminish what I actually think God is. And so that's kind of the bottom line for me is, I don't know, I'm, you know, I'm just in awe of, of our life and what I do know and what I don't know, and um, so um, to me, that's kind of the, the um, spirituality. And I remember, um, you know, going well. I, you know, I feel that more when I'm out in nature. You know, I'm kind of an introvert, so uh, I'm not kind of quite. Um, but um, then I remember distinctly in the '80s uh, when the situation where Central Americans were being set back to death squads that the church um, decided to be a sanctuary church. You know, um, there was a number of churches in the uh, Twin Cities that did that, and it was a big step to take because basically you were taking people um, and um, sheltering them in the church uh, against the, um, the, the United States, um, you know, the FBI, if they uh, found them out in the street, would deport them. and they had been people that had spoken out in their country against the United, the, the, our country's uh, sponsorship of their of the um, uh, um, government that they were fighting in El Guatemala and El Salvador. So our country was um, supporting these dictators in these other countries, and um, so we we you know, and so I remember saying to myself, "Yeah, this is really a." A reason to be a church um, or uh, you know a spiritual organization to come together this is something that an individual can't really do so um, to me that was a kind of a turning point in 
um, my, you know, if any reluctance I had to be a church member, you know, the, that there was really value in that and that I believed in it. And, and like I said, open and affirming for all paths. Um, I think, you know, we really, you know, maybe we should add something to our mission statement that kind of indicates that, you know, not only paths, but, you know, gender identities and, and everything else to let people know that that's, you know, really our, our um, um, value system, our mission here at Walker Church. Okay, that might just about do it here. I can't remember if there was anything else. Oh, and so, yeah, so I wanted to compare what is going on at Walker. Now we have um, another situation where because of the uprising, because of COVID that um, we've, we've um, opened up our doors to a lot of um, organizations that are serving the public. And, um, you know, I, again, for me, that's really an important uh, mission for our church and one that I want to support. And I, you know, I w was hoping to bring someone from Brass Solidarity and, and maybe someone from one of the groups that um, works out of Walker, um, which didn't work out, but I know that there's there's plans to have, um, you know, Ron is putting together um, a list of, of the people that are in our church and kind of updating us on, on who, who is um, being supported and operating out of our church, which I think um, is a great, also a great part of our mission. So I think with that, I will just thank you all for listening. And um, if there's any questions or um, if this makes you think of something that you would like to tell a congregation as well, um, Mary's got the microphone. Um, go ahead and. Thank you. Th thank you, Steve. I, you, you, you triggered a bunch of memories for me. I haven't been here as long as you, but I've been here a while. And, uh, my big brother here actually was working uh, with Brian during the Model Cities days when he was working down at the predecessor of the Indian Health Board. And I remember Walker Church being an active community member. Rather than just being a church, it was a part of the community. And I sort of knew about that, but uh, I didn't know anything about the Methodist Church when I got into this church. I realized that they were doing a sanctuary. And by the way, I believe that when you helped the sanctuary people, you were actually committing a federal crime. And we were all kind of proud of that. Uh, and uh, never never actually, I don't know that anybody around here ever got charged with it, but anytime you gave one of the uh, illegal refugees a ride to look for a job or something, you were supporting uh, an illegal alien in a way that could have had you criminally charged. And I thought that was a good sign about what Walker was, and I thought that was a reason why the Methodist Church at large must hate Walker. And then when the district superintendent came, the first time I went to a charge conference sometime in the 80s, this, the conference started out with Brian having Howard sing, I believe in the Gospels, but I don't believe in the epistles. <laughs> and I thought, my gosh, what's he doing? He's just rubbing, rubbing salt in the wound. But the DS looks up and says, I'm really glad because I chose my text for tonight from the Psalms. And the, I believe that what happened was that Walker Church was then, and I hope still is, a burr in the saddle of the church, that we're making them think about what they ought to be instead of what they are. Yeah, I, um, Model Cities, I was on that board, and, I, and it was one of the first times I um, met Brian, and um, as well as um, I uh, was a volunteer at uh, Youth Emergency Service, along with um, um, just Jennifer, yeah, excuse me. Uh, and uh, there we had these resource lists and, and there was a bunch of stuff for Walker Church there uh, that, you know, the draft counseling and, and the education exploration center, um, the choir. And so um, uh, that was really what brought me over here um, as well. So, uh, but yeah, there's so much going on and I think we we have to, look forward and see, um, you know, how we can uh, be and, and how we continue to be vital in the community. When I hear the word Methodist 
mentioned I wake up, I'm, a, I'm what's called a cradle Methodist. I was born into a Methodist family and have stayed that all my life. But we're in a crisis situation. What I wonder about is <clears throat> here we are uh, in an appropriate role, as just explained, um, and what we can be in uh, uh, churches everywhere, not just Methodists, what we can bring up and uh, promote or uh, voice. Um, and here we are about to follow a path that is Methodist uh, and that has led, I think, to a declining uh, denomination, um, and not just Methodist, but other Protestant denominations. So it seems to me we're about to jump on a horse that has not ridden very far. And I wonder if that'll work. I wonder if we shouldn't be looking at the Lutherans, at the Assembly of God, uh, and so forth. Going back, I mean, when I was at Yes, Roger Lynn was one of the pastors we would call if we got a call from somebody who had been busted, usually for drugs, and was in jail. And he was one of the people that could get in there and talk to him. And that's why I came to Walker Churches, because everywhere I went, there were usually posters, and there was some activist event going on at Walker Church. It was just... You know, it was a wonderful time where we were young and very hopeful that we could change the world. Mm -hmm. And we haven't, but maybe <coughs> we've done a little. But I do think we should, as I keep saying, go forth with some humility here and not see ourselves as being, see ourselves as being part of a larger struggle, not grand people that have done, <laughs> you know, or that have all the answers. Yeah, for sure. There, there's um, plenty of um, indication that it's our time to step aside. But um, you know, I think looking at the vitality that was happening then, I think is inspirational for what can continue to happen and how can we be allies of that process. Hi, thank you for opening it up for us to share. Um, I don't know her name, but I want to speak to you that, and all of you that um, you have, you have changed things. That when you were young, and full of energy around changing the world, you have changed the world. Because I'm one of the young people that's benefiting from that. So you have what you did all those years ago, does have an impact on those of us who are young, in changing the world. So I just want to acknowledge that. And um, I wasn't planning to speak today. This is my first time at service here. I've been here many times for events. I was here Monday night for Kitty Kulavar's memorial. Very honored to share music. I knew her daughter Hannah and I knew Kitty at the very end of her life. Um, and I was raised in a Methodist church in Duluth. So that's kind of sweet, you know. Um, I've been looking for a church home since I moved back to Minneapolis a few years ago. COVID disrupted that. And um, I just want to say that this place um, has been a beacon for me. It was one of the first places I came to do movement at an, a, a dance event here when I was in intense grief after my husband died. And um, I had a profound exper spiritual experience with that, and I'm looking for my church home. And I don't know that it's here. I don't know yet, but there's a very positive, welcoming energy here and an energy of people wanting to spread love and joy and support what's right, not what's politically acceptable, and I just really appreciate that. So thank you for being this all these years. Yeah, thank you very much. Um. All right, on we go. Um, yeah, talk back, and we can do the circle, joys and concerns, birthdays, uh, and a closing song, and then uh, if people want to I have more music. Um, the the singing from the songbook will happen after the circle.
Okay, let's get in a circle. You want the brass solidarity to come up there, right? Yeah, musicians, why don't we come up on the stage and then we'll play something for the president. And I'm late, so maybe I can do that while people are gathering. <laughs> oh, when we do judge and confirm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. We'll take a few minutes for our for our joys and concerns, and we're going to start with an announcement. And may I take this off? Yeah. Okay. So I'm the one from the board who's going to tell you what we did at our last meeting. Uh, on the faithful path, we are going to be gathering together a lot of information, and sometime in May, you'll be getting a lot of information about Walker Church. We'll have a financial report. We'll have a list of all the people who are um, using the building, and so we're going to give you a good start at planning our future. Uh, I'm the finance lead, so... If you have questions about finance, talk to me. I can tell you how much money we have in the bank right now, but I can't tell you uh, what the financial reports are because we're behind in our bookkeeping. But we're going to get caught up fairly quickly. Uh, I do want to give you a heads up. Who wants to do another rummage sale? (laughs) One? One person? Um, So in the last couple of years... We have used up all of our reserves, and we were so blessed to get Tom Manley's house and have $100,000, and we spent $50,000 of it each of the COVID years because we couldn't do fundraisers. Um, Some of us uh, found that we didn't have as much money in our pockets as we used to, and we need to start doing fundraisers again. But I don't think a rummage sale is appropriate. So we're going to have a not rummage sale ask. We're going to ask, we're going to have special envelopes next Sunday. It'll be a special offering. Think about what you would have spent at the rummage sale or all those hours that you would have spent at the rummage sale and how much is your time worth. And give us a donation for our spring not rummage sale (laughs) fundraiser. Uh, one of our renters, NICFA, NCFA, will be managing the gardening. Uh, David West, are you here? Mm-hmm. Did you really just decide to uh, take over the newsletter? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. I'm not yet, but I'm ready. Excellent, excellent. So our weekly newsletter has not, um, you know, Rhonda has more than enough to do, thank you very much. And what David West has volunteered to take over the weekly newsletter, and I'm very grateful that you're doing that. So, thank you very much. Oh, and uh, we'll be counting how many people are here today. I have my assistants doing the count. You want to say anything? All right, Nancy. Oh, I'm sorry. Thanks. Okay, joys and concerns, not really announcement time. If, If you have a joy or a concern, I'm coming, coming by. Was that you? Joy that Pierce is 21 tomorrow. I didn't do him in. <laughs> oh. 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 A long, long time ago when I was living next door, um, I never thought I'd be a very good minister's wife. And I said that to Brian Peters, and he said, Oh, don't worry about it. It won't be like anything you've ever seen. And <laughs> I thought, well, okay, and he turned out to be right. It was not like any other minister's wife or congregation that I have ever been belonged to. But um, I remember that when we were in Pine City, the, the organist quit because he was preaching against uh, the Vietnam War. She just left. And uh, 
Charlie Sweet, who was a district superintendent, came one day and he said, I think, Brian, I think I can find a better place for you. <laughs> so he did. Okay, I, I'm just going to share a miracle that I feel right at this moment, which is I was thinking about Kay while Steve was speaking about Brian Peterson, and I was thinking I want to mention Kay, who I believe, even though I wasn't part of Walker back then, that was married to Brian. And what? how was that in, from your standpoint? But I didn't, and then you just started speaking just now. So that seems rather miraculous to me. Oh, I just want to say um, how blessed it was to have those memorial services for Al and for Kitty because um, like it really wore me down with my work, but it was such a great example of... I always wondered, well, why does the art become famous after they die? But you really feel... Um, those lessons, the impact that that person had and the conversations that you had with them, those really come to hit home. And and so, especially like with Kitty, my goodness, she's already passed away for two years. And it was so beautiful to see the turnout for her and the, that smile, how a smile lives for eternity and will never forget how she was showing up and loving people, and it was a really beautiful thing. I have some thoughts because of um, my, my wife's best friend of 60 years, and uh, my daughter and my wife are going up to Duluth today for the vigil for the people who were murdered in Duluth uh, last week because uh, the um, the woman and that was the birth mom of uh, one of our best friends uh, and though I didn't know them very much the other three folks my daughter and my wife and uh, her friend were very close to that woman who was uh, who died and knew her whole family and you know, we see tragedies all around us, but then suddenly you see something come by close and you realize that we need to support each other and we need to help each other through hard times. Thank you. All right, any birthdays? Yes, I have one on Thursday. Dave, okay. Dave. <laughs> I know. It is. It's good. <laughs> Anybody else? Birthday this week. Okay, let's have happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs>